the Kraft Ebbing poems. And so this is from Psychopathia Sexualis by Richard von Kraft Ebbing, uh, which is a wonderful book, and it's a very important book for those interested in literature. It's, I mean, psychology, yes, but, but uh, <laughs> definitely for literature. So uh, and it's a whole series of uh, explanations of these uh, different conditions. They're all kind of organized in an encyclopedic way. And, uh, and there are a lot of case histories, and the case histories are the most interesting uh, parts. <laughs> <laughs> the Kraft Ebbing poems, case number 106. When she was about 10 years old, she thought that her mother no longer loved her. So she put matches in her coffee to make herself sick, that she might thus excite her mother's affection for her. Case number 88. On account of this impotence, the patient applied to Dr. Hammond, who treated his epilepsy with bromides and advised him to hang a shoe over his bed and to look at it fixedly during coitus, while imagining his wife to be a shoe. <laughs> Case number eight. As a child, he was not affectionate, was cold toward his parents. As a student, he was peculiar and retiring, preoccupied with self. He was well endowed mentally and given to much reading, but eccentric after puberty. Alternating between religious enthusiasm and materialism, now studying theology, now natural sciences. At the university, he read Jean Paul almost exclusively. His fellow students took him for a fool. Case number 89. On his marriage night, he remained cold until he brought to his aid the picture of an ugly woman's head wearing a nightcap. Intercourse was immediately successful. Case number 36. She must stand at the window awaiting him with her face done up and on the entrance into the room, complain of severe headache. He is sorry for her, asks particularly about the pain, takes the cloth off, and then puts it on again. He never touches her, yet in this simple act, finds complete sexual satisfaction. <laughs> Case number 55. On their wedding night, he forced a towel and soap into her hands, and without any other expression of love, asked her to lather his chin and neck as if for shaving. The inexperienced young wife did it, and during the first weeks of married life, was not a little astonished to learn the secrets of intimacy only in this way. Case number 102. Trapped in a circle of erotic ideas, the patient grows more and more peculiar. He avoids a society of women, only associates with them when two witnesses are with him, and only for the sake of music. Case number 83. His dreams are filled with aprons. 